Now, I'm sure you all know what the AC-130 is. With its powerful guns, targeting computers, and precision air-to-ground weaponry, the AC-130 makes one of the most formidable CAS aircraft out there for counterinsurgency. To improve upon this even more, the vehicle has an incredible range, loiter time, and payload capability, making it one of the most effective vehicles in the US armament for long-range counterinsurgency missions that may require a long loiter time. Its operational altitude and fixed-wing nature allows the AC-130 to stay safely out of danger of any weapons fire from insurgents. In case this doesn't work, it also includes one of the most incredible countermeasure systems imaginable. This enables it to dispense a high amount of flares and shaft to confuse any incoming man pads, or more commonly known as man portable air defense systems such as stingers or eagles. There is one thing the AC-130 doesn't do though, and that is come cheap. Costing a minimum of $10,000 per hour to run, the AC-130 isn't what you would call a low cost option. That being said, the military industrial complex of America will gladly have the government keep buying their assets over and over again for more and more money. So I am certain they don't mind the extra war and crises, because war means money to them. But again, it does cost over $10,000 an hour to run, and the AC-130 isn't exactly a low cost option. The ammo and munitions cost even more, ensuring that the AC-130 will only be brought out on higher profile missions. Well, higher profile in terms of counterinsurgency, or the war on terror, that is. Like maybe intercepting a convoy, or there's a known compound or something, then the AC-130 will be used. Hey guys, it's Messier82, and the question of the video today is this. Can we combine the safety, countermeasures, loiter time, and range of an AC-130 on a lightweight and relatively cost-effective airframe such as that of an OV-10? Well, let's find out. But before we do that, let's learn a little bit about the AC-130 and how we can translate it to this plane. Typically, this is the loadout of a typical AC-130. The AC-130U Spooky. A 105mm M102 howitzer is mounted towards the rear section of the aircraft. This howitzer can be used to destroy infantry or fortifications with its powerful high explosive shells. Next to it, you will find a 40mm L60 Bofors cannon. This cannon comes at a smaller size, but with a much higher velocity and rate of fire, offering a high volume of fire right up there with the howitzer cannon. Lastly, you'll typically find a 25mm GAU-12 equalizer cannon mounted towards the nose. This 5 barreled cannon can spray up to 4,000 rounds a minute of 25mm explosive death, ensuring that whatever target you are firing at will be appropriately peppered. Since the aircraft is typically involved in combat, I guess you could call that <clears throat> assault and pepper. <laughs> oh, that was awful. And, of course, ignoring all the weapons, countermeasures can be found mounted near the aft of the aircraft along with targeting systems, a radar, and night vision being mounted closer to the front of the aircraft. Later models include more advanced avionics, hellfires, and even towed radar decoys to evade radar missiles. So obviously the AC-130 was pretty decked out and there wasn't much chance that we were going to reach the same level of combat effectiveness as the AC-130. But when has perfect realism ever been a stopping force for this channel anyways? Plus the goal of this aircraft isn't to be as combat effective as an AC-130. I don't think that's really possible. The goal is to maintain similar or higher levels of combat effectiveness as per cost when scaled with the operation cost. So let's say this thing takes a thousand dollars per hour to run that's one tenth of the operating cost it only needs to be one tenth as combat effective which i think is more than within the realm of reality here so by god we were going to try it even if it doesn't work out this thing still fills a pretty unique niche imagine like an ah-64's capability on a light aircraft that goes much faster and can stay much further away from the combat zone and well they, of course you have to trade the ability to hover for that but still so I'd say it's not an entirely useless niche, so I can see something like this actually being developed. Maybe, however unlikely it is to be effective, I wouldn't mind seeing the government throw money at it as they often do for other nonsense projects. Anyways, we would have low mounted wings on this aircraft along with four low radius counter rotating propellers in order to not get in the way of the guns. Or I shouldn't say low mounted, but more like mid-section mounted wings. This is because our vehicle would feature a chin-mounted 15mm Gatling gun that would shoot at almost 4,000 rounds per minute, sure to chew up any insurgents out and about. 
They were in the middle because also in the back of the aircraft there was a 32mm autocannon. Early on you see this cannon mounted near the center mass, but it is later moved towards the tail of the craft in order to shoot over the wings a little bit easier when it's holding a perpendicular pattern to the combat, or rather the combat area. Both of these guns would be operated by a single Wizzo and would be slaved to a single nose-mounted FLIR-style targeting pod. This would also feature laser targeting capabilities for Hellfires as well as their own individual cameras in case aim needs to be separated for whatever reason. Also, the weapons would have a very specific azimuth limit so that way you don't accidentally shoot yourself, of course. The rear cannon, after being moved to the tail, had a very wide firing arc as well as 15 degrees of depression which would be more than enough to shoot at relatively close ground targets. Obviously I couldn't model it, but I would imagine that each gun has its own separate trigger on the operating yoke the gunner had, as well as a pickle and laser lock for the Hellfires. I mean, originally I was going to use Hellfires, but it turns out the new update that came to fly out sort of broke the Hellfire models I had, so I simply mounted Mavericks where the Hellfires should be. And you know what, speaking of things that change, originally I was planning on mounting the targeting pod off the wing, but eventually it was put on the front for more range and observability. Originally, the targeting pod had a countermeasure pod uh, symmetric with it, and they were both placed under the engines, but I soon moved them both under the wings, so I had more firing angles for the guns, and I just replaced the original targeting pod with a second countermeasure pod. I mean, there was like absolutely no reason for countermeasure pods, I just had them there because I couldn't replace it with more Hellfires, basically. But fully loaded, I'd imagine this thing could probably carry up to 16 Hellfires along with the two AIM-9s and the guns. At that point, I'd rather stop for the issues of wing loading as well as just making sure I don't get in the way of propellers and guns. Obviously, this thing would have a lot of firing angles and hardpoints, so I needed to do a lot of work sort of like Tetrising everything to make sure it fits and doesn't get in the way. The landing gear, turret positions, and weapons, hardpoint positions were specifically mounted to give the guns the largest firing arcs possible, making the gunner's job hopefully a little bit easier. Also, due to the positioning of the targeting system as well as the gun's position, this thing would have a significantly wider firing arc than the AC-130 and could also circle with the target off the left or right wing, which was I guess up to the pilot's preference or the mission conditions. I mean, that's not exactly a crucial feature to the aircraft, I mean, it, it doesn't really give major benefits, but I, I guess it's a little bit useful to have for the pilots anyways. Then lastly, for the cockpit, I admittedly threw everything together a little bit too quickly, and I just used some old sub-assemblies I had lying around from Hot Dog, so thank you to him. That being said, this is probably going to be the last time I really use these old sub-assemblies as the last input update sort of broke them. I was just a little bit too lazy to replace them as of now. Essentially, for my next few builds, I am going to put a lot of effort into some hopefully really detailed as well as more computationally efficient cockpit pieces. A large problem last time was a lot of cockpit pieces had aerodynamics applied as well as having far too high a resolution. This was causing a lot of unnecessary lag in my build, so I intend on fixing it on my next build. But that's enough about my cockpit, even if it was a little lazy, I was ready, as was the rest of the plane. It was time to fly out. Folks, our mission here today is pretty simple, as I don't have a lot to do with this aircraft right now. All we gotta do is destroy a tank or maybe fly around here. There's a bit of a strong crosswind, so excuse me for going off the runway, but we are in the air, alas. Yeah, so again, there's not much to do with this thing at the moment. Um, no missions I can complete or anything like that. Uh, what I can do, though, is probably destroy a tank or something, right? 
And at the very least, I can show you guys the gun movement. So if I go into my controls here, I have both the turrets slaved to the same movement axis. Pop them over like this. Let's say I've got a target 90 degrees perpendicular, as most gunships do. Then I can circle a point and just bang, bang, bang. 32 mil how or I'm not how it's 32 mil auto cannon along with a 15 mil Gatling gun should be enough to shred most things we come across. Um, like I said, I'd prefer to have uh like Hellfires here as opposed to. Why is my landing gear messed up? Yeah, whatever. I'll I'll solve that later. But as opposed to uh, Mavericks, I would have far preferred Hellfires be here. But that, unfortunately, was not an option. Fix those guns. No, again, not a lot to do. Probably just go fly over to this tank. There we go. Turret X at zero. So, the idea is, more or less, you have that FLIR pod that has laser targeting and um, air-to-ground targeting capabilities and a computer is built in to automatically track the path of the bullets and uh, aim it for you essentially. So all you gotta do, sort of like a ballistics computer. So all you really gotta do is point at the target with the camera, um, make sure the guns are attached to it or slave to it, and fire away. And whatever you're looking at should go poof. And then if you don't want to use that you can just use a hellfire instead. I was thinking of mounting like a, mis uh, uh, a uh, missile turret to it for the Hellfires, but I don't really think that matters. Weapons. AGM-65. There we go. And it isn't the fastest vehicle, but I gotta say I'm pretty happy with it, because it flies about the same speed and the same climb rate as a C-130. A little bit faster. Um has about the same range, about the same loiter time, and it costs, like, less than one-tenth to run this thing out than it does the AC-130. So, ultimately, I think this thing accomplished its goals pretty well. I wonder if I shoot from here, will the Maverick hit? I sincerely doubt it, but I'm willing to try. There you go, buddy. You have fun. I'll just set, uh, autopilot to fly me in this direction or whatever. There you go. And now let's watch the missile go in. Uh, I forgot how slow Mavericks are. This is not going to make it, is it? Um, what was I saying though? Oh yeah, so I was pretty happy with how this turned out and it feels like a vehicle that could actually maybe even exist in real life, which is pretty wild for my builds. Usually I'm just doing complete nonsense, but this time around I think it could be something that actually exists. Holy crap, it's gonna make it. Thank goodness these things can loft. Or, well, I, I wouldn't call it lofting. I'd call it more fl flying in a straight line, but still. Also, let's look at the... Oh, that's an awful tank model. I shouldn't have looked at it. Eh, whatever. It does the job. Good enough. Yeah, look at that. We're only nine clicks away now. Uh... You know, we've reached the point where my Maverick's actually going slower than my plane. Which I think is actually pretty funny. But, uh, you know. Uh, if this doesn't kill him, I can try and kill him with the gunship, uh, weaponry. But, uh... Oh, it's stalling bad. But, what was I saying? I'll try and kill it with the gunship weaponry, but I'm not sure that's gonna work because it's really hard to target with them. Uh, like, actually a ground target, because there's no aiming reticle. Holy crap, he just stalled straight out. He's going right down. Well, uh, so much for that. I think I shot out a little bit too far out. 
That's fine. There we go. Now this one's gonna hit. Yeah, there's no targeting system though for those um guns, so it's kinda difficult to hit it. Oh yeah, he's toast. I mean I can try though. You know what? If I'll spot another tank if it's close to me. I'll try to hit it. Where is it? Actually, better yet, I'll just try and hit this one from here. May as well. Close. Not quite, though. No cigar. Come on. Yeah, I know this isn't a good uh, hold pattern, but uh, I don't think there is an autopilot hold pattern, so I'll just do that. Hey, we hit him once. Awesome. Awesome. So that, folks, is why you don't have the pilot aiming these guns. <laughs> All right. Well, um, oh yeah, we can do flares. We can do like the, the angel of death pattern or whatever people call it. Pretty cool, right? Can do flare and chaff. Not that it matters. Not that anything's actually chaffable or flareable in game at the moment. But you know what? I love playing pretend, if you guys can't tell. So, I believe that is all for this video. Ha! Hit him again. So, if you guys enjoyed, feel free to leave a like. Um, you know what? I'll start posting to my hangar again as well. So in the flyout server, I have like a little craft sharing folder. If you guys want to join that, I'll definitely post this thing in there. Uh, along with the stunt plane, I guess, but that one doesn't seem to be doing too good. Oh, well. Well, anyways, guys, I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good day and goodbye.